There's a lot of controversy brewing around a popular stock that a lot of us own or at least are thinking about buying. The bulls and bears are arguing with the bears claiming that what just happened in this stock is a giant bull trap and that the stock is setting up to crash this year. So in this video, we're gonna break down the bear case and see whether we should be selling this stock or not because that's what we do at Falbo, right? We watch the downside and we manage risk because if you're a money manager, what are you actually? You're a risk manager. That's your number one priority. Now that doesn't mean you just sell everything and sit on the side sidelines because that would be stupid too. I mean, we're in a bull market. There's a ton of money to be made, but we actually got to make that money in a smart way that reduces our risk. We got to minimize it because we know 99% of investors are going to get absolutely steamrolled when this bull market turns around, which it will, I promise. And along the way, there are going to be individual stocks that collapse. So what is the stock in this video that the bears have their sights on? Well, it is none other than Netflix. And yes, I know, I know what just happened. Earnings came out and the stock price popped over 15, 16%. So what are the bears talking about? Well, this is kind of their whole point, that this is a bull trap, meaning that this positive action is gonna suck a bunch of people in and Netflix is just setting up to go the other way. And that's what they mean by bull trap. So let's jump into their argument and see if they're full of it or not. Okay, so there's a few different aspects to this bear argument. The first one being that Netflix is gonna see a lot of increase in competition, which it already has. Look at this, this is all this streaming services there are so many of them and now paramount plus is coming out which is supposed to be another big one and rumor has it that this new top gun movie is actually going to show up on that streaming service because everyone moved their premieres to streaming services now right and man i gotta say tom cruise very cool guy does all his own stunts he had to learn how to fly planes for this movie and i know people don't like tom cruise but i love all his movies even when i say the name tom cruise i just feel like clapping like tom come jump on my couch anytime you want he makes great movies love watching this little guy run around and do stunts at 55 years old or whatever he is or i think he's just 50. <laughs> just 50. but anyway with all this new competition what the bears are saying is that netflix is going to have a problem because what netflix has been doing over the past few years is slowly increasing prices but if you have all this competition which even on here is what one two three four five six seven eight nine because i think cbs access goes into paramount i can't remember but that's a lot of competition so you can't expect one service to be raising prices because when there's so much competition it's usually a race to the bottom. Meaning if this service is charging $10 a month for streaming, let's come out with a $5 price point. And that's kind of what we saw happen with Disney Plus, right? When they first released. And what they call an industry like that, where there's all that brutal competition, they call it a bloody red ocean because all the fish are bleeding, I guess. Or maybe because all the fish are cutting themselves because that's what you do when you cut prices. Whatever the analogy means, it's basically bad for everyone involved because you're trying to starve out the next guy. So no one's making profits. So that's the fear here for Netflix as more of these services ramp up. Now, the second point for Netflix bears is that Netflix is overvalued, of course. Of course, they're going to say that, right? Now, this point, I'm not even going to cover because everything's overvalued in this market. And in the short term to intermediate term, I don't even care about valuations. They don't matter. Oh, valuations are high. Well, guess what? They could get much, much higher. So who cares? So let's just move to the third point about the bear argument, which is skepticism over earnings. So as we saw right here, earnings came out, right? And Netflix popped over 15%, but they actually missed earnings. As you can see here, analysts were estimating $1.36 per share, they only came in at $1.19. So why did they pop? Well, you can never look at just the phase value of earnings. You got to dig into what the investors are actually looking at, which is why you could see something like this where they miss earnings and the stock pops. And you can see other stocks where they completely crush earnings and the stock drops. You got to understand the true reason of why the stock is dropping or popping. And in Netflix's case, it's all about subscriber growth. That's the key metric. And Netflix just hit 200 million subscribers. You can see right here, the CEO of Netflix, Reed Hastings, he says at 200 million, we're ordering Denny's. And I know you're looking at this and thinking, why would anyone ever, ever order Denny's to their house? The worst breakfast, but Reed here isn't even eating breakfast. That looks like lunch. Look at that sad little soggy broccoli. And oh, I don't even, I don't know what the rest of this is. What is that, a burrito from Denny's? See, this here is a crazy man. That's why he was able to see the vision for Netflix and take it to where it is. And that's also why this guy orders Denny's. Oh my God. That's what, the most genius people are always just one step away from crazy. That's what they say, right? So you can see Netflix's subscriber growth here. So this is what all the bulls were excited about, but the bears 
boys look at this and they don't like what they see because they're seeing something else. What they're seeing is that, hey, you got all these subscribers because look where it popped. Pandemic. People had no other choice. They had to sign up for Netflix. And that's the only reason there is this big pop. And going forward, look at the 2021 forecast. Much lower than any of the previous years. It's only higher than 2017. So that's why bears are saying, hey, this is short term. This is why it's going to be a bull trap. You are going to see things come back down in 2021. Bulls were also excited about Netflix's cash flow because for so many years now, Netflix has been burning money like crazy because of all the content that they produce, right? But now they're finally getting positive. So positive that they're saying they don't have to borrow money anymore. But again, bears look at this and say, hey, this is all pandemic related again. This is short term. And the whole cash burning argument is one of the biggest bear arguments for Netflix and it's been around forever. And you can see why when they burn more and more cash. So once again, they're saying, hey, this is setting up for the bull trap. This whole big earnings thing, temporary because of the pandemic. Just wait for the economy to open back up and no one's sitting on Netflix all day anymore. Everyone's out and about. Plus you have all this other competition. Netflix is going to get smacked. That's the bear case. So are they right then? Is this whole big pop that we just had, is this just an overreaction to some short-term numbers? Is this indeed a bull trap where people are going to get crushed in 2021 when the stock crashes? Well, in my opinion, no, the bears are not right about this. And to show you why, let's go to the smartest tech analyst in the game, Ben Thompson. So this is from his website, Stratechery, where he broke down what bears are really looking at here. So you can see right here, this big increase was from the CCPV lockdowns. Then you basically had flat growth in the next period. But the positive is that Netflix went back to their steady growth in the fourth quarter. So a big idea of the bears is that they just pulled subscribers forward, meaning people who would have signed up in 2021 just signed up early because of the pandemic. So that's why things will fall apart in 2021 this year. Well, here's the thing. Pulling subscribers forward, that's actually a good thing when you have subscriptions because all you did is increase the lifetime value of that customer because now that they're pulled forward, right, that they were subscribed all of 2020, that's another 12 months that they paid you versus only starting to pay you in 2021. So pulling that revenue forward is a good thing and it gives Netflix a bigger base and it helps keep this going, their free cash flow so they don't have to borrow because more and more people are paying earlier. And yes, it's true. The 2021 forecast is lower than the previous years, but I'll tell you in a second why that doesn't matter so much. And another reason why cash flow is getting better, and it's not just because of the pandemic, but it's because costs are going down. Look at this right here. Netflix's marketing costs collapsed. They're spending way less on marketing than they did before. Their cost of acquisition is through the floor right now. You can see here the year over year change of marketing costs versus content costs. The marketing change is much bigger in a good direction. Obviously, less costs is better for the company, more profits. Same here. Another graph showing the same thing. Marketing costs just going through the floor. Now, again, bears say that's just because of the pandemic, because you didn't have to advertise as much because everyone flooded onto Netflix by themselves. But that's not true. That's just not the way to look at it. And this goes into the whole macro thesis about why we should be bullish on Netflix. And that's because Netflix is the new cable. They already won the streaming wars. And the best example to prove that is this guy right here, the Tiger King. Now, whether you watch this documentary or not, you know it was one of the biggest things in 2020. And where was it? It was on Netflix. And here's a question. Ask yourself, do you think that Tiger King documentary would have been big on any other streaming service? No, it wouldn't have. And that's because distribution is king now. And that's why I'm saying Netflix is the new cable. They already won because they have the distribution. They have 200 million subscribers. So when you have that many subscribers, your marketing machine is the homepage of the app. It's the algorithm recommending whatever shows they think is best for the customer. And that customer watches the show, likes it, tells their friends. Tiger King, huge social media blow up right? It was a crazy story. I admit that, but was it the best thing ever? No. But when everyone sees it, just getting it in front of people, then it has a much better chance of blowing up. Queen's Gambit, the same thing. Now this actually was a good show in my opinion, but this was on the homepage of every Netflix user for at least a week. And if you want to see the power of Netflix, you should go look at the sales of chess boards. It exploded and people were playing so many more hours of online chess. Everyone was interested in chess all of a sudden. And you could pretty much call that the Netflix effect because they are the king. They have the distribution. And the flywheel that they have now because of that distribution, now that they have all these customers paying all this cash, they announced in 2021 that they're releasing a new movie every week. And these are blockbuster level movies. How do you compete with that? Good luck to any streaming service getting on that Netflix level. Even when you have a ton of money backing you up like Apple TV, you're still not going to have that Netflix effect where they make the hits. Even something that's not a hit can become a hit because it's on Netflix. Now, the only company that will be able to compete with Netflix, in my opinion, is Disney. And that's because they have the best IP in the world. You know, Star Wars, Marvel, Disney characters, princesses, whatever, all those. 
So that's a machine that's been going for years and it's not gonna stop. If you watch their investors presentation, which was a few months ago now, the number of shows and movies that they announced is insane. And these are all super high budget. The Mandalorian is the first show that looks no different from a movie in terms of quality of the production. And it costs as much as a movie. So Disney is really blurring that line and that's why they can compete. Just look at this song by this girl talking about getting a driver's license or something. I, I don't know, I didn't even think they were important after having Uber, but this thing blew up, broke so many records. And you know where she's from? She's from the Disney machine. She was a Disney star or something. So in my opinion, the only one really competing with Netflix is Disney. But even so, you know Netflix is kind of way more broad, doing way more content. So they are the cable of this new era. So it's stupid to be bearish Netflix. Now, of course, even when we're bullish, we still want to watch the price depending on our strategy. If we're a buy and hold investor, then who cares? But when you're managing risk, you want to be watching this. You want to be looking at the bear argument because who knows, maybe we are completely wrong with the bull argument and this is a bull trap. Well, how are you going to manage your risk? Because you don't want to take the loss, right? So if it was me and I was holding Netflix shares, I would have sold a little bit on this pop, take a bit of profits and I would have moved my stop up. So if this is a bull trap, I get out with a nice gain. For example, you could set a stop right around this black bar. That's a bad drawing. Hold on. There we go. Nope, there we go. Or you could even set a stop right below this candle, the low of the candle. Because if it's breaking that and closing there, then yeah, it does look like more of a bull trap. And that's what you gotta realize in the market, even though it seems very obvious that you should be bullish Netflix, at least to me. You could very well be wrong. The best hedge fund managers, they are wrong all the time and they're still making billions. That's because they control their risk. But here's another thing. In this market, I would never touch shorting something like this. Because the best thing you can do in the market is not step in front of a bullet train. And that's what you're doing, trying to short in a bull market and I saw some bears were placing shorts so I could have enough conviction to take profits and sell out of shares but to short it now that's wild now in addition to Netflix there's actually another big tech company that is in trouble there is a target on them and it's another one that we actually have to look at to see if we need to sell if you want to see that video click this video right here to figure out what to do with that stock the government has their eyes on them and it doesn't look good so click this video and I will see you there